Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here today. I got to say, this is a great event. I think probably I should move up. So one of our mottos at Corning is always innovating. And so to come to an event like this, a the festival is focused on innovation, I'm very excited. I also want to take a minute to acknowledge one of our largest customers in India, Xiaomi. They're so focused on their Mi community and delivering a great user experience. So it's no wonder that they have a wide range of durable phones with Gorilla Glass on the front and the back. So, Anuj, thank you for the thank strong you. partnership. Now, as John mentioned, Corning's been working and failing with glass for almost 170 years. And glass has actually been around for over 2,000 years. It's one of the most ubiquitous materials on the planet, and yet it's often overlooked and taken for granted. For example, many of you may have been in the shower looking through your glass window, or maybe you've had your favorite drink this morning in a glass cup. But when you drove here, you looked through your glass windshield, or some of you are looking at me now through your eyeglasses. And all of us touch our smartphone and the, the glass that's on there thousands of times a day. So the question I have for you is why is glass used in all those applications? And really to understand that, you have to understand what problem you're trying to solve and why glass solves some of those problems. So to, be, to help with that a little bit, I thought it'd be good to look at where does glass come from? It's basically sand. It's, it's, it's some of the most abundant raw material on the Earth's crust. And we take it and we dig it out of the Earth, we put it into big tanks, and we melt it at 2,000 degrees Celsius. It's about 80 or 90 percent made of silicon dioxide. And then we add in other elements from the periodic table that give it certain properties or different colors. It's almost like a chef taking different Indian spices and creating different foods and different tastes. And that's basically how you create different compositions of glass. Now, once you get the glass into the right ratios, you're left with an optically transparent and pure material. And that's fundamentally the first problem glass is trying to solve. You want a transparent material. That's what the reason we cut holes in our houses and put windows in there so we can see outside. And when you think about it, there's very few materials that are transparent, and that's what glass is trying to solve. Now, you can make this glass so pure, and that's what Corning did when it invented ultra-loss optical fiber, basically the glass that powers the internet. Now, that glass is so pure that if you were to fill the Indian Ocean, you'd be able to see the ocean floor miles below. Isn't that amazing? It's such an invention. Now, glass solves many other problems, as John mentioned. It's thermally stable, so it can withstand wide ranges of temperatures. And it's the reason it's used on all the manned space missions in the United States. It's also chemically stable, and it's the reason you have a lot of your medicines and your vaccines are stored in glass vials. And lastly, it can be a fantastic design and artistic tool because you can shape it and craft it. Now, one of the next problems we're trying to solve with glass is how do we prevent glass from being fragile and breaking? Now, to do that, you really have to understand how, why materials fail. And they basically fail in two ways. One is under compression, like if it's, as if you're trying to break eggs, or in tension, as if you're trying to bend a piece of wood and snap it in half. Now, glass is extremely strong under compression. In fact, it's stronger than steel and stronger than concrete. It has a theoretical compressive failure of 15 gigapascals. Now, none of us have a scale at our house that can measure a pascal, but one pascal is as much as 10,000 elephants. So glass is an amazing material when it comes to compressive stress. That's a lot of elephants. <laughs> the challenge, though, is how do you get glass that can withstand not only compressive stress, but also tension stress. When you bend glass, it's going to break. And that's what our scientists do every day, is they break glass. They're trying to understand the fracture mechanics, the failure modes, and different, different crack propagations. 
And I encourage all of you to go to the Gorilla Glass Sandbox and see firsthand how we break glass and how we build some of those tests and talk to some of our experts. So Corning analyzes glass at the molecular level. We're always trying to understand the chemistry and the fracture mechanics that are behind it. And what Corning developed was two, two innovations. The first was a very specialized glass composition, choosing the right elements from the periodic table that create a very strong glass. And then we also invented a chemical temp tempering process that allows you to take advantage of that compressive stress, that inherent capability in glass. Now, when you bring both of those together, you now have a glass that's not only strong in compression, but it's also strong in tension. And we call that glass Gorilla Glass. Now, we still drop our phones every day, right? And the next time you do that and you bend down and you pick it up and you look at it, and you have that fear of dread, did it break, did it not? When it doesn't break, you can thank a small little company in upstate New York that we helped solve that problem too. Okay. What I'd like to do is invite Anuj and Serene back on the stage, make this a little more interactive. And what we have over here are some of the That's tests it. from our labs. Uh, and I want to help, help show you how some of the specific material properties of glass that relate to our smartphone. Probably need a camera up here. So. What are we doing now? All right. <laughs> The talk is over. <laughs> the talk is over. Now Show it's, us stuff. Now it's going to be outside. fun and games and breaking stuff. So the first thing when the reason glass is used on a smartphone is because the alternative material is plastic. And that scratches very easily. So I, the question I have is, where do you keep your smartphone, Shereen? Mostly in my hand. In your hand, your yeah. purse, yeah. laying it down. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to hand this over to Anuj. This is a piece of plastic on one side with a key. <coughs> And you can scratch that, right? Sure. And you just see all the scratches ah, in that's there. All, that, that looks terrible. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want that on my phone. Let me, let me do that. I don't know if you can get you the can sound it. of it. It's right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's ugly. And then scratch the Gorilla Glass. <clears throat> sure. OK, hold your breath, guys. Are you doing it hard enough? Yeah. <laughs> you sure? All right. So hey. that. You broke. Hey. Oh, you, no, I think you I broke the key. The key. You <laughs> broke the key. <laughs> I got something off the key. <laughs> but yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. So that's the main reason plastic is not used on smartphones. You have to have that scratch durability. Wow. So the problem to solve then was, <laughs> it's great for scratch, but it's going to break. And so what we have is a test. Don't do a Tesla on us. <laughs> <laughs> is we compare soda lime glass, which is, is basically the, the majority of the glass in the world, it's in our windshields, it's in our cars, um, and then compare it to Gorilla Glass. And okay. what we have here is we've taken the glass and we've actually scratched it to, to simulate different flaws or damage you would get where it's in your purse or if you were to drop it, okay? And maybe I'll have Anish come over here. And this is what we call soda lime. It's already pre-scratched. Okay. And I'll just hand this to you. And see if you can. But well, that's the soft edge. That's well. You can use the hard edge. It's okay. All right. Let me try that. Be careful. I don't know if you oh can see boy. this. Oh <laughs> boy. So Look at all the cameras. <laughs> so glass is glass, right? That's basic. That's regular glass. So glass will break. Glass does break. It did. Okay. <laughs> okay. And there it is. So that was what the glass was like before Corning invented Gorilla Glass. So you can try the same test with Gorilla Glass. Are you Come sure? on, Anuj. No, a, yeah. <laughs> Give it all you have. <laughs> this is the Elon yeah. Musk moment, right? Now, if, you can't, if you can't break it, you got to get me a T-shirt. <laughs> I think we need someone stronger than me. Should I have Shireen do it? She's a little. You want to try this? Stronger, stronger. Am I stronger than Anuj? All right, I'll give it a shot. Awesome. Your hands are ripped on red. So that is the difference between basic glass and highly engineered glass. And wow. so materials aren't all the same. You have to keep creating differentiation, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Nothing. So 
That's the difference between the materials. Now, what we do in our labs is we try to create drop tests. And okay. so we have different drop test vehicles and we drop them at different heights and try to understand, take actual pucks and do that. Um, and to simulate that, we've created, and we do it on sandpaper, which is really to, met to mimic rough surfaces like asphalt. So this is basic asphalt you'd see in the real mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And then the lab, we create 180 grit sandpaper to give that same surface roughness, but now it allows us to remove right. all the variables and do a much more scientific right. test. So this is like if I drop my road, I'm, my phone on the road. Correct. Is yeah. Is it Delhi roads or Bangalore roads? <laughs> <laughs> Take your That's pick. It. Which ones do you want? <laughs> It depends if you have your SUV. Okay. Maybe like Delhi roads, I guess. <laughs> I wish Delhi roads were that smooth, but... <laughs> you've not seen Bangalore. So now what we do is we put the sandpaper on this, th on this device, and we call it a slapper. A no slapper? Yes, we're, ver we're very creative in our name. Okay. That's the slapper, ladies and gentlemen, on, on your screens. And what we do is we take a piece of glass, and we put it in a little bit of a tension because you have to have a flaw and tension for glass to break. <clears throat> and what we have here is non-gorilla glass. So, and what we're trying to do is simulate the, the force from a drop event okay. in, on either a, a Delhi road or Bangalore road. Sure. And so, as the higher and higher this goes, you get more and more force that's simulating a drop event. Right. And so, just something like this is about maybe about 30 centimeters. Okay. Okay. Not, so not very high. Probably okay. if you're in college and you're sitting on your desk. And you drop the phone. And you were to drop your phone. From right. your pocket. Exactly. So right. it's, it's just the bench part. Exactly. Okay. So it's like a chair height. Not oh. very high at all. Oh. So that's non-gorilla glass. Very, very, and you were able to break that with a pencil. Yeah. Now, if I were to put gorilla glass in the same test, it would survive all the way up to here. So what we had to do is create a bigger slapper. Mm -hmm. So this a is bigger slapper. a bigger slapper. <laughs> That's what the world needs, a bigger slapper. That's exactly right. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. So this, this, because it has a longer moment arm, would replicate maybe like a, a meter height, maybe waist height. All right. So I'm, I'm taking my phone out. It slips. Yeah. It falls on asphalt. On asphalt. On road. Exactly. Yeah. So this is Gorilla Glass 5. So if you okay. have your, your Redmi Note 7 there. Do you want, I'm afraid to look. Okay, that passed. Woohoo! Now, you could bring it all the way to the top. This is about 1.3 meters. Do you want to try? Give it a shot. All right. You can hear yeah. the force. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Survives. Wow. So, and an even bigger slapper. <laughs> so we came out with our latest generation, Gorilla Glass 6. Now, this is the industry-leading glass on, on the majority of the, the flagship phones. And we needed a bigger slapper because we couldn't break Gorilla Glass 5. <laughs> this one we call the super slapper. So super now slapper. we're getting super really slapper. creative. Here, I'll, I'll let you do this. Do you want to try? Okay. I'll give you it can a pick shot. a height. Okay. How high? You can go, well, you, you can't go that way. No, this? He's gonna go, just yeah. Right? No. Yeah. Go. Just, are you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. One, two, three. Ouch. Well, it dashed, thanks, Chuck. It survived. It survived. It has survived to tell the story. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Again? But that, you can if you want. You should, you should put the mic just there. For fun. Just for fun. Oh. <laughs> this still gives me chills. Oh, yeah. So there you can clearly see the different <laughs> generations and the improvement and the innovation that comes with each generation yeah. of glass. Yeah. So we're really excited. Hopefully you got a better appreciation for the science Absolutely. behind it, Absolutely. how we test it. And I encourage you to uh, swing by the Gorilla Sandbox and talk to Guys, some experts. Uh, you can do this outside as well at the uh, Sandbox. But thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anuj, for thank joining us me. here and giving us a sense of where our phone technology is headed and where glass technology is headed. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Scott and Anuj. Thanks very much for joining us here.